Welcome to section 20 of viruses. This is an overview figure listing the viruses that you need to know. In this section, we will be discussing the Zika virus, which is right here. Our story starts on the beach of a tropical island. We are gonna see this island from the perspective of some blood sucking mosquitoes. These mosquitoes are full of blood, as you can tell by their red bodies, but they're not satisfied. They want some more blood of the tourists here on this island. These mosquitoes will help you remember that Zika virus is mosquito-borne, which by definition also means it is arthropod-borne, or an arbovirus. We like to use the Spanish word for tree, arbo, to help us remember the word arbovirus. So again, mosquitoes and the arbo tree stands for mosquito-borne arbovirus. One of the attractions of this little island is tourists get to meet the famous model slash actor Tanzika Amin from Bangladesh. You can see the sign here with her name on it. If you want to know what she looks like in person, you can just look it up really quick. Tanzika Amin. Her interesting name, Tanzika, represents Zika virus. So when you think of this island with tourists meeting Tanzika Amin, think Zika virus. Now the attraction is successful, as you can tell by the long line of tourists here to meet her. This long line represents the fact that Zika virus has a linear genome, a long line of people to meet Tanzika for linear virus. You can tell with the warm colors throughout the scene that this is an RNA virus. Recall that for viruses, a red or warm color scheme indicates an RNA virus, while a dark color schematic indicates DNA viruses. So, red warm color for RNA. And since Zika is an RNA virus, it is important to know whether it is positive or negative sense. As you can see from this rainbow back here, it is definitely a positive sense RNA virus. Rainbows are associated with positive vibes, so rainbows in our image represent positive sense RNA viruses. Now look at this tourist resting on the beach as the sun sets. You can see from her large belly that she is definitely pregnant. She's likely trying to squeeze in one last vacation before she delivers her baby. Well, this pregnant woman represents the fact that Zika can be transmitted through the placenta, causing an infection of the fetus. Now also look at those two torches at the gift shop. Torches, T-O-R-C-H-Z, is an acronym used to describe infections that can cross the placenta and lead to serious illness or deformity of the fetus. Now Zika virus is considered one of the torch infections. Traditionally, the acronym was termed T-O-R-C-H-E-S, with S on the end, not a Z. The S stands for syphilis. In recent years, with Zika entering the scene, people often call these torches infections with a Z on the end, Z for Zika. In this acronym, syphilis gets grouped with the O group, O for other. In any case, this pregnant mom and the torches represent torches infection. Now let's talk about how Zika virus can affect the fetus. Well, back here, we have another mom who is just leaving the nearby gift shop. You can see the little baby she's carrying in her arms. Let's take a closer look. This mother thought it would be nice to buy a little stuffed toy of a penguin for her baby. Nothing says tropical vacation like a penguin toy, right? At Physio, we like to use penguins to represent microcephaly. That's because penguins have such small heads relative to their bodies. Look at this cute little penguin. It has a ginormous body and this itty bitty head on top. It barely even has a head. It's almost like a beak on top of its adorable fluffy body. So just remember that in Zika virus, the transplacental infection can cause congenital microcephaly. Stuffed penguin for microcephaly. Like any truly festive tropical resort, there are some sweet lamps scattered throughout. These awesome heat lamps represent fever. When you get near them, you get warm. Again, heat lamp for fever. You may have also noticed that these lamps are shaped like icosahedrons. This awesome lamp design represents the icosahedral shaped capsid that Zika virus has. So when you think of these awesome fever lamps, you will remember that Zika virus has an icosahedral shaped capsid. Now look at this little guy running up from the water. While splashing around in the waves, he got himself a nice rash from a violent encounter with some mean mosquitoes. Boy, that rash must be itchy. You can tell he's been scratching himself because of all the scratch marks all over him. Now this indicates that patients with Zika virus can get a rash. Not all patients with Zika virus will develop this rash, but it is present in up to 20% of cases. Now you can feel bad for this Zika infected boy, but rest assured, he fought back against those nasty blood sucking mosquitoes. In fact, he managed to smash up a bunch of them and place their remains in this now bloody bucket of his. It's totally full of blood. Anyways, all of these smashed up and bloody mosquitoes in the bucket represent that Zika virus is diagnosed using a blood sample, or serology. Now little man really can't catch a break though. You can see his bucket is stuck in these three chains embedded in the ocean floor. Now these chains also have mosquitoes just smashed up all over them. This represents that Zika virus can be diagnosed with a polymerase chain reaction. At Physio, we like to use three chains to represent PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. So again, bucket of blood for serology tests, and three chains for polymerase chain reaction. As if things couldn't be worse, look at those red eyes from all the sand the kid got in them. Well, those red eyes represent conjunctivitis that's present in Zika infections. So again, 
little kid with red eyes running up to his mommy will help you remember conjunctivitis. Now look at the boy's father resting here on the beach with his pregnant wife. He's drinking water from these water bottles. Because water is so central to supportive care in practically any condition a person can have, at Physio, we like to use water to represent supportive care. You're sick, let's give you some water. This is really the only treatment for Zika virus anyways. There isn't a vaccine, there isn't a cure, there's no antivirals, just supportive care. Help the patient get through the illness until they fight it off themselves. So again, water bottles for supportive care as treatment. You may also notice this man gagging in disgust when he takes a drink. I guess the water has a bad flavor. This apparently potent flavor represents flavivirus. So again, bad flavored drink stands for flavivirus. Now that you've learned everything you need to for Zika virus, let's do a question to apply it. A 23-year-old female at nine weeks gestation presents with a low-grade fever and red eyes after returning from a vacation in Tahiti. She learned of a recent outbreak of Zika virus at her vacation destination and is now worried about what a Zika infection could do to her baby. What congenital malformation is associated with transplacental Zika infection? Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that she has a fever and conjunctivitis, which is consistent with a Zika infection. She doesn't have an itchy rash, but this also would have been possible. Recall I mentioned that only 20% of patients actually develop the rash. But anyways, she's concerned about her fetus. So what malformation are we worried about? Microcephaly. Recall this tiny penguin toy being held by his mother. Penguins have relatively tiny heads, so microcephaly. And with that, you have learned all the details you need to memorize for Zika virus.